Jesus. Scripture reading this morning from 1 Corinthians in the 11th chapter, starting at verse 23, and it reads as following, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup. You do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Amen. And thus Amen. ends the reading of the scripture that we're going to be referring to as we participate in the communion supper. For this is a supper. It is a feast. It yes. is a celebration. Yes. Hallelujah. And this celebration is for all believers, everybody that's in the family of God. Yes. So this morning, we give you an opportunity, first of all, to become part of the family of God. Yes. And second, to examine yourselves and make sure that you're in right standing or fellowship, or there is no broken fellowship between you and God, something that you may need to repent of before you partake in this communion. Yes. Because if you don't, you will be judged. You will be held accountable because God has given us an opportunity Yes. to get things right with him. And that's the whole purpose of Jesus coming. He came that we might have fellowship with God. Jesus came and he shed his blood yes. because all the sacrifices that had been being shed in the Old Testament, it wasn't sufficient. No. It covered the sin but it did not take away the sin. Come on. Amen. So since there was nothing in the earth that was worthy to be that perfect sacrifice, Come on. God prepared himself a body. Yes. Call that body Jesus. Jesus was 100% man and he was 100% God. Yes. And he came down and he went to a rugged cross. And he shed his blood. He was that ultimate sacrifice. I said he shed his blood. And that blood had the power to wash away our sins completely. But we have a part to play. We have to accept it. In Sunday school this morning, it was awesome. And as we talked about fighting from a place of victory, it's because of what Jesus done on the cross. That's what gave us victory. Yes. It was through his shed blood 
That's what gave us victory. The blood of Jesus. So today, before we partake in our communion, let's do one thing. If there's anyone that has never accepted Jesus in their heart, and maybe you did and you didn't mean it, but you have an opportunity now. So Father, I ask this morning, there's anyone under the sound of my voice today, we invite them into the family of God. Yes. And as they pray this prayer with me, Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I know that I deserve to go to hell. But I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross in my place. So today I repent of all my sins and I accept Jesus into my heart as my Lord and as my savior. And Father, I thank you that you said that if I come to you, you would not refuse me. So Father, I thank you that now my land, my name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. Thank you for saving me, Father. Thank you, Lord God. If you just prayed that prayer with me, yes. now you're in the family of God. Hallelujah. But there may be someone else here to say, oh, I prayed that prayer. I prayed a long time ago. But you have a broken relationship. What do I mean by broken relationship? I mean, when you get up in the morning, you're not thanking God. I mean, you don't talk to him throughout the day. I mean, you don't acknowledge him in what you do. You make your own decisions without consulting him. Come on now. If there's anyone here like that, that you used to talk to God, but now you're not doing that. Let's get that right today. So pray with me. Yes. Father God, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. And I come to you repentant, asking you to forgive me to wash me, to cleanse me for all the times that I have not done what you have told me to do. Forgive me, God, for not reading my word, for not praying, for not living a life pleasing to you. But today I repent. I ask, Father, that you will restore that you will restore my fellowship with you. Fellowship with that you will restore my joy. And that you will restore my peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And if you pray that prayer, now you're in right fellowship with God. So everybody under the sound of my voice should now be in the position to take communion. And guess what? If you did, if you didn't repent, you're going to be held accountable. I've done what God told me to do. Yes. With that in mind, hallelujah. let's go to our hallelujah. Praise God. Thank hallelujah. you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I um, would always ask my grandkids, we take communion at the house, when we were all in the house together, Amen. and we would take it every Sunday. And we will go around the table. Each one of them would have to take a turn and administer the communion. Amen. But we talk about what does this wafer, what does the cracker represent? Mm. God's body. Amen. We talk about what does this juice, what does this represent? It would be the blood. Yes. We would talk about if you're going to partake in this, are you supposed to be saved? And they would say, yeah. And I would ask the question, how do you know you're saved? And they would have to tell me. They would have to give me the correct answer. Come on. That they accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Is that right, you all? So that's what we've done today. Yes. We're, in, we're, 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 we're in the right standing now. So, Father, we lift this wafer up yes. and we thank you yes. for Jesus. Yes. Thank you for the body. Yes. of our Lord and Savior that was broken for us. We break it and 
and we partake, remembering what he's done. Amen. Hallelujah. This simple juice represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His blood, it went to the highest mountain, to the lowest valley. His blood, hallelujah, Jesus, because of his blood, that's why we're here today. So today we remember the shed blood of Jesus Christ Amen. and we partake together as family. Amen. And we thank you, Father, thank you, for this precious time Amen. that we could spend in your presence yes. as family, yes. reminiscing and remembering what Jesus has done. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood yes. that Jesus shed. For me, way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. I would say it with me. It will never lose its power. Oh, 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 it reaches. There we go. The
Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you uh, to another one of our spirit side chats. Yes. Today, we're going to continue chatting about being Christ's nature. That is his grace. God in nature continue. Who am I in Christ? Hallelujah. His Lord. Yes. I be the Lord. Uh -huh. And as disciples and believers, we must know what this is. Amen? Amen. So then the Bible says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. His mercy endures forever. Mm. Psalms 136 and 3. It also says, I urge you in the sight of God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ is appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. Can y'all say in his own time? Oh. His own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, potentate, which is a person who possesses great power as a sovereign monarch or ruler. So he who is blessed and only potentate, the king of kings and lord of lords, 1 Timothy 6, 14 through 15. These will make war with the lamb and the lamb will overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Revelation 7 and 17 and 14. And he has on his robe and on his thigh. Check this out, y'all. On his thigh is on his person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords. Yeah. What I want to know in this house is how many in here profess to be lords? Hallelujah. How many profess to be lords? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then if you profess to be a lord, turn with me to Hebrews. <clears throat> to God be the glory. My job is to provoke you. To open up your Bibles. And everything that I get, I get from the Lord himself. So I'm not ashamed to go forward in this word because he gave it to me and told me to do so. He gave me the spiritual license to go ahead and do it. Amen. Yes. Pastor, he gave me the spiritual license. Hallelujah. Not a license of man, but a license of God. Come on, yes. But it's far, far more superior than a license of man. Yes. Turn with me to Hebrews. I want us to go to chapter five. I'm going to start at verse one. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It says here, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in the things pertaining to God. Mm. Let's look, 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 look. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in the things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Mm. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray mm. since he himself is also subject to weakness. Y'all Jesus. feeling this? Yes. Yeah. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins. Yes. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. And I want you to skip over to, with me to same chapter, but go to verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracle of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled. Can y'all say unskilled? unskilled? Unskilled in the word 
of righteousness. For he is a babe, but solid food, solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy scriptures and that they are blessed to be able to be understood and received by the manner of which they were given. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, give you glory and honor. We come before you, praising your holy name, glorifying you and thanking you, Father, for this one beautiful day that you have created for us to come together to give your name glory and honor and to give you praises. Oh, how we magnify the name of the Lord and glorify him. We thank you, Father God, that everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, will be provoked to open up their Bibles, to search the scriptures for themselves, to yes. see what you see, Father God, and to hear what you hear, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that not one individual will leave in the same manner of which he or she has entered. But let there be a renewedness of life, Father God, one that will cause us to open up our Bibles and to become one with you, Father God, so that we can walk this life, Father God, giving you the glory and the honor and the praises. We pray all of this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the Son of God, we say amen, amen, and amen. Who? Am I in Christ, Father, his Lord? Yes. Once again, please, Quest, understand that God's word is full of symbolism and representation. Mm -hmm. Now, in the chats before, we had been chatting about the maintaining of the law, and that law is the law of love, which is, stay with me, y'all, the nature of God, mm -hmm. which can be difficult for us if we do not know that we and the body of Christ are his lords. Mm -hmm. And we must acknowledge this, saints, if we want to be his effective lords. Mm -hmm. The scriptures just read gives us information concerning who we are and the power we possess. Let me say that again, Deborah. The scriptures just read, you know, the ones in Hebrew, gives us information concerning who we are and the power we possess mm -hmm. to God be the glory. Hallelujah. This is about a new life experience, saints. It's about life, a spiritual life lived right here on this earth. In this world, the spiritual life doesn't start after the flesh is scourged from our souls. It starts as soon as we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. If you don't want the good spiritual life, I'm saying the good spiritual life, then don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Oh, amen. Wow. Because what I am telling you guys, what I am telling you is something that will save your lives and not pet your flesh. I am not, nor have I ever been, a flesh peddler. Oh. You guys with me on this? If you desire that, then you must go someplace else. I'm not here to pet you. I'm here to put something on the inside of you. First, first, we must know that in order for us to become lords, as you say that you are, right, Ernie? We must first be priests. Amen. A priest, saints, is a person who makes sacrificial offerings. What is the sacrifice that a priest make for sacrificial offerings? His life. You guys with me? Her life. Not only is a priest a person, but it is an office. Huh? In other words, a priest is a who and a what. Y'all with me on this? Yes. Why is that? Because, Tasha, it is natural. Priests are natural. Yes. You guys with me on this? Yes. A Lord is a person who has authority, control, or power over others. Let me say that again. A Lord, you know, is a person who has authority, control, 
or power over others. I think Pastor Lee gave us a perfect example of a Lord that's here on this earth that has nothing to do with the context of what I'm talking about, but it has everything to do with you being an understanding of what a Lord is. You ever heard of a landlord? Yeah. Make it simple. Thank you, Pastor. You ever heard of that? So that is a person <laughs> who holds an office that has what? Authority and control or power over you if you live or reside in his property. You guys know what I'm talking about? Y'all not getting this, are y'all? See, the Lord has property. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Not your property, but his property. And he can do what, whatever he wants with it, whenever he wants with it. So a Lord is a person who has authority, control, and power over others. In this context, y'all with me? It's spiritual and can be referenced as a spiritual office or place. Not natural, but spiritual. A Lord is a person who is a leader or have great influence. Can y'all say influence? influence? Say it again. Influence. Say it like you mean it. Influence. Over others, over. right? Yeah. In order to have influence over others, there must first be accountability. Yeah. Hmm? The accountability must first, Pastor, start with you. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Amen. You can't hold anybody else accountable unless you first hold yourself accountable, yeah. right? But influence is the action of a process of producing effects on the actions, behaviors, and opinions of others. Let me say that again so y'all can get this. This is what influence is in this context. It is the action of a process of producing. So influences, influence produces. Huh? It's action that produces effects on the actions and behaviors and opinions of others. You guys with me on this? Yes. We can then reference, if this is true, the fivefold ministries as part of our lordship on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with me here. Stay. My job is to provoke you, right? Yeah. Stay with me here. Understand that God has no respect of persons, right? When it comes to his children or his spiritual offices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For each child is called to have influence over the world. Whether you up here speaking or whether you sitting in that last pew, the influence and the goal and the purpose does not change and it is the same for everybody. Amen. You guys with me on this? Yeah. He is the five-fold ministry and so are we. Or at least we're called to be one of them. Come on now. You guys, you guys feel me? The question is here, which are you called to be? He himself gave some to be apostles, mm -hmm. gave some to be prophets, mm -hmm. gave some to be evangelists, gave some to be pastors, and gave some to be teachers. Yeah. Know that after you add up all of the sums, it is equivalent to all. Mm, yeah. Stay with me here. After the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body of Christ, Ephesians 4 and 11. Yeah. See, there is no office or lordship greater than the other. Mm -hmm. And no competition of the saints. That's right. Mm -hmm. We have compartmentalized, if there's such a word, and formed competitive superiority levels of these spiritual offices by placing them in the rank of authority. Oh, Y'all want me to say that again? Oh, yeah. See, see, we, and I'm talking about the body, not Jesus, not God, not the Holy Spirit, but we, right? Right? God's property. Yeah. You know, we're God's property. Yeah. We, God's property, have compartmentalized these offices and formed competitive seniority levels of these spiritual offices by placing them in rank of authority, whether consciously or unconsciously, 
believing that the office of an apostle is greater than an office of a pastor. Oh, I don't mean to disrespect anybody, but see, that's what we do, whether we do it knowingly or unknowingly. Well, an apostle is greater than a pastor. A pastor is greater than an evangelist and so forth and so on. And a bishop is greater than all of them. This is not of God. But no office or lordship is greater than the other. First Corinthians 3, 1 through 4 says this quote. Fleshly lords then are whose and spiritual what's. You guys with me on this? Why? Because lords grow to become full-grown spiritual creatures. See, you have a goal. Your goal, whether you recognize it or not, Jesus, your goal, can you hand me that? Thank you. Thank you, sis. Your goal, whether you recognize it or not, thank you, Holy Spirit. He says the people of, of uh, YouTube got to hear this. The goal, <laughs> whether you recognize it or not, is to become a full-grown spiritual creature. That should be the goal of every man, woman, and child that God has placed here on this earth. Notice that in Revelations 19 and 16, you guys with me on this? Yeah. Notice that the L in the second Lords and the K in the second Kings are now capitalized. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Notice that. Do always notice these things. They are capitalized. When in the scriptures before, they are in small caps. There's a reason for that. Why you say that is, Pastor? Because we will be ruling and reigning with him and will once again be one with him and of him when we grow to be full-grown spiritual creatures. Okay. Okay. That's the reason why our name is on his thigh. <laughs> Jesus. That's the reason why our name is on his person. See, you don't tattoo a name on your person unless it is what part of who you are. Mm, oh, Jesus, yeah. stay with me. Stay with me here. Stay with me. I'm told I can't have gaps in, in between these things for the radio program. Look, 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 look. You got to. You got to when you tattoo someone's name on your person. That means that you become what? Part of that person. Because you don't want to what? Take that name off of your person because why? It's a painful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only is it a painful thing, understand, and I'm talking natural now. I'm talking about a natural tattoo. Mm -hmm. Understand now, in a natural tattoo, in a natural tattoo, when you put his name or her name on your person, there may be another what? He or her that you discover what? Later. Wow. So therefore, that name is now what? Defunct that's on your person. You guys feel me on this? Yeah. But Christ, Jesus, has our name on his thigh because he never will go back on his word. On, we are part of him, we are of him, and we will remain with him and stay with him. That's the reason why we are, he's the king of what? Kings. And the Lord of what? Lords. Capital L, capital K. Because we're one with him. That's the reason why our name is on his thigh. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. That is the reason why our name is on his person. Mm -hmm. Shared resources, shared responsibilities, and shared powers. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. You guys got to stay with me here. Now, for every high priest, take it from among men. And I'm back in Hebrews, Hebrews 5 and 1. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men and these pertaining to God and the things pertaining to God that he may offer gifts and sacrifices of sin. First, know that a priest is taken amongst the brethren. Mm -hmm. You guys with me on this? Yeah. The priest is taken amongst the brethren and is appointed for men. Meaning that he or she is assigned to the world. Oh, Jesus. Oh you guys get me on this? Yeah. And things, they're assigned to the world in the things pertaining to God. Yeah. 
So you're not here on your own purpose. You're here for a person, in person, purpose, with a purpose. Yeah. For the things pertaining to God. And every man, woman, and child who have received Christ as their Lord and Savior, you are now a priest. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. stay with me. So stay with me. Yeah. Priest with a purpose. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Look, 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 look. The question is, what are the things pertaining to God? That's the question. And I'm glad that you asked me that because the Lord sent me here to answer all questions concerning this text. You guys with me on this? Yes. The things pertaining to God is this. Not one should perish, yes. but all should come to repentance. You guys with me on this? Yes. Then too, the deep things of God embodied in Christ, the word, who and which is one, wisdom, mm -hmm. two, righteousness, three, sanctification, and four, redemption. Now, the priests offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. Mm -hmm. You guys with me? Yeah. Those are the things that are pertaining to God. Those are the things in which you were sent for. Mm -hmm. You guys understand me? Yeah. That, that you bring Christ, our Lord and Savior, to the world. Mm -hmm. And that you embody these, these characteristics, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That's you in a nutshell. A gift, saints. Check me out. Check out God. Check out this word. A gift is given voluntarily yeah. without payment, right? Mm -hmm. Something bestowed or acquired without particular effort. In other words, I'm not asking for something in return. There are no quid pro quo when you're giving gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't give you a gift, Pastor Carolyn, mm -hmm. expecting you to give me one back. Right. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. I don't give you a gift, Sister Deborah, expecting for you to give me something back. No, I freely give it to you. Right. I freely bestow it to you. Right. Because it has meaning to it. Yes. Yeah. So a priest offer gifts and sacrifices. He's going to offer something without payment, mm -hmm. something bestowed or acquired without particular. That's the reason why if I'm asked to go to go and speak anywhere, mm -hmm. I find that an honor. I don't charge anybody for that. Mm -hmm. You guys, I don't ask for any gratuities mm -hmm. because this is a labor of love. Yes. You guys understand what I'm saying? Amen. I will go to the sewer to preach Christ, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yes. And not and, and listen, it's not about the numbers. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's, not. Yes. it's not about them. I will preach Christ Jesus to one just mm -hmm. as well as I will yes. preach Christ Jesus to a million. Yes. You guys with me on this? Mm -hmm. Now, 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 now. A gift is given voluntarily without payment, something bestowed or acquired without particular effort. And a sacrifice, once again, saints, <laughs> is an offering. You guys with me? We talk about this. It's an offering for the destruction of something that is prized for the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. That is what, what priests do. Then the gift that is given is a sacrifice for sin. You guys get me on this? Yeah. Then the gift that the priest gives is a sacrifice for sin. What you got to understand is that even though he's given it to you, it is accounted by God. See, the priest cannot give you nothing that has not first come from the Lord. Okay. You guys with me on this? Yes, yes. Then the gift is that is given is a sacrifice for sin. The priest in the natural is then to give himself as a gift from God for a sacrifice unto man which is the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved what? The world. So if God be loved the world that he gave himself to it, who are you to deny yourself from it? Mm. Stay with me here, y'all. Stay with me here to God be the glory. In other words, priests are living epistles, seen and read of all men 
They are living examples of the things pertaining to God. They are wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and symbols of redemption. See, I had an old life, Brother Ernie, that is now dead, but I've been redeemed and restored into this new life. So I'm experiencing this new life yeah. experience. You guys with me on this? Yeah. See, you are a living, walking testament of two types. Yes. All of us are. You have an Old Testament, which is an old testimony, right, Pastor Lee? And now you have a New Testament, which is a new testimony. The old is not the new, and the new covers all the old. Yes. You guys understand me? Yes. Walk in my shoes just once. And with that new life, Quaz, comes wisdom comes righteousness because you're living a life of the wisdom comes from God. Why? Because you speak God's language to others where they can understand it. Righteousness because of your right standing and right living in God. Sanctification because God has placed his priest to the side, yes. right? And also redemption because you are a walking symbolism of redemption. Yeah. They are living, breathing faith walkers. Yeah. Let me say that again. Oh. Priests are living, breathing faith walkers. And we talked about this in Sunday school. You know, they walk by faith and not by sight. Can nobody tell me that in my flesh, I am prone to death. No matter what's in my flesh, it is not part of who I am. It is not part of me. I know who I am because the word declares who I am. Yes. And I am part of the word. Yes. yes. Look, 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 look. The priest presents their bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. And they know, a priest knows that that is his reasonable service. A priest, Pastor Lee, is a living example. Amen. Yes. Jesus, Jesus. In Hebrews, back to Hebrews 5, 2 through 3, quote, we're talking about the priest. We know that you cannot become the Lord unless you are first a priest. Mm -hmm. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant. Mm -hmm. Look, 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 look. I like Christ. He puts it where the sheep can get it. Yeah. You guys understand what I'm saying? He says that, listen, if you're going to be, and you are, and you say that you are my priest, my Lord, know that you have to have compassion on those who are ignorant. Mm -hmm. That is those yeah. who lack knowledge or lack yeah. intimacy with yeah. God. Listen, you don't ridicule them. No. No. You don't hang them up in effigy. You don't compare what your knowledge is to their knowledge because in the end, it means nothing. Because if they are in Christ, they're going to the same place you're going. Right? Listen, and without as much time dedicated to the same word that you're dedicated to. Look, 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 look. Your knowledge, your maturity, your strength is for the edification of the body. Yes. Jesus. Oh, God, I wish I could just look, 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 look. Those who are ignorant, that means they lack knowledge or lack intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. Not everybody know how to be intimate with God. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Heck, with me, it was trial and error. <laughs> Come on. I had to grow into it. Come on. Yeah. Look, 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 look. He says he can have compassion. This is the, the priest. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant. Why? And going astray. Why? Since he himself is subject to weakness. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Since he him, that's a mouth. Look, look, look. Because of this, he is required as for the people. So also for himself to offer sacrifices of sin. Stay with me here because this is a mouthful. Look, look, look. A priest then should know that he is no better than the unlearned. Mm -hmm. Jesus. A priest should know that he is no better than the unbodied. Stay with me here. Or a priest should also know that he is no better than a babe in Christ. Come on. You guys, as long as he or she has this cloak of flesh, the priest knows that he or she is subject to weakness. Because in this state, he or she is weak or vulnerable. 
Ha ha, look, look, look. In this state, he or she is weak, which means that we're vulnerable. Don't think you got it and you all that in a bag of chips because you've been in a word for 50 years. You understand? That's pride. That's not humility. You got to stay on your toes. You got to know that you know that you know for sure that I am prone to weakness. That's the reason why an alcoholic stopped drinking and admits that he's an alcoholic. <laughs> because he can slip and fall. Yeah. Once again, look, 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 look. Priests know that they're vulnerable or weak. In other words, priests know that they are subject to sin. Mm, yeah. They know that they're prone to it. Mm, huh? Yeah. Oh, I don't, not yeah. prone to what you watched last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's right. And that, saints is the reason for forgiveness and repentance. Yes. In other words, the priest knows that he or she is not better than anyone and looks down on no one. Amen. If you're going to be a priest because you're trying to become a Lord, you better do it right. That's right. Yes. But by the grace of God, yes. go I. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, a priest keeps that in mind. For the priest is skilled. Can y'all say skilled? Skilled. skilled in humility and empathetic to sinners because he and she has been there, have done that, and might do that again. Come on now. You guys with me on this? Yeah. This on. is you. This is me. This is us. Come on. And because of this, he is required. Can everybody say required? required? That is, he's called to. A requirement is something that you must do in order to make what? <laughs> in order to be that which you call or declared yourself to be. And or which that which God declared you to be. And because of this, this is God speaking. He is required as for the people and also for himself to make his life a living example of an offering and sacrifice unto man by first holding himself accountable, which makes him an offering and a sacrifice unto God. See, it starts with you and God. Yeah. Yeah. Understand that. That's where it starts. It's a personal thing. It starts with you and God. I cannot go out. I cannot go out and speak about the life of Christ if I'm not living it. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. You got it? You, you, you understand me? You understand me? I cannot do that. It cannot be done. People may try it, but God knows the truth because you're always naked in front of him. If someone says that he loves God but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. First John 4 and 20. Priests cannot hate. Oh, my God. Let me say that again. Priests cannot hate. Hebrews 5 and 4. Quote, and no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. This is a motor scooter here, saints. Look, look, look. Know that priests or a priest is honored by God because the priest answers the call of God. See, if you want to be honored, answer the call. Mm, yeah. You guys with me on this? Yeah. If you want to be honored, answer the call. For one cannot take it upon himself to be a priest. Mm. That's talking loud and saying nothing. I think that's scripture too about the clanging symbols. Mm -hmm. In that, in that, in that scripture, yeah, yeah. Of those theologians that's in here. Look, 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 look. Watch this, watch this, watch this, y'all. This is what really blessed my socks off. Y'all with me on this? Watch this. Strong's Hebrew lexicon translate the name of Aaron. See, I had to look that name up because God threw it in there. See, God just don't throw stuff in there just haphazardly. He just don't give you a name and say, ah, oh, it's just a name. 
See, what you got to do, you got to research the names, you got to research the places, and you got to research the numbers. Look, 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 look. Strong's Hebrew lexicon translate the name of Aaron as light bringer. It also has the meaning of lofty mountain of strength. But this is the kicker. It also has the meaning of teacher. Can y'all please say teacher? Teacher. 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 Look, for though by this time, now I'm in Hebrews 5 and 12. We, we jumped over to 12, remember? For though by this time, you ought to be teachers. Oh, Jesus. Okay. He's saying that you ought to be errands. Oh, oh, Jesus. No. Are y'all looking at this? You, you feeling this? Look, look, look. He says, for though by this time, you ought to be teachers. Mm -hmm. You need someone, you need someone to teach you again? Can y'all say again? Can y'all say again? Can y'all say again? You need someone to teach you again? The first principles of the oracles have stunt their growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A teacher imparts knowledge of or is skilled in and give instructions to or in, right? Teachers live what they teach. Mm -hmm. And in this context, must be living and, and, and walking books of what is taught. Let me say that again. Teachers live what they are teaching mm -hmm. and must be walking books of what is taught. For we are all called to be teachers. Mm -hmm. Stay with me here. The true teaching of a teacher is not by what is said, but by what is lived. Right. God holds teachers accountable. Yeah. That's the reason why he holds his priests accountable. Yeah. Teachers cannot say one thing and live another thing. Right. We're talking about the priests, y'all. Mm -hmm. look, 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 look. Then there's the oracles or the oracle. An oracle is a divine communication or revelation. Can I say that again? An oracle is a divine communication. If it's divine, you know it ain't coming from me. <laughs> Y'all with me? You with me, Ernie? You, it, is a, it is a divine communication because I can't communicate divinely. <laughs> the only way I communicate divinely is when I read word for word what thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For we know that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of who? Oh, the no. mouth of God. No. Look, 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 look. An oracle is a divine communication or revelation. And understand we communicate with more than just the spoken word. You guys with me on that? You know, your body language says a lot. And I'm talking naturally now, right? See, when people are communicating with you, they're looking at your body language in the natural. Because your body language will tell that person a lot of what you think about what they are saying or expressing to you. If your body language is off, then that person think you're off. <laughs> look, look, look. It has nothing to do with what they're communicating. Because that person believes that they're what? Always on. Uh -huh. But people look at the body line, right? So look, 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 look. Understand that we communicate with more than just the spoken word. We also communicate with our lives. Mm -hmm. See, you want to know how to get to a man's heart? Let him examine yours. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Let him see you walk in the glory of God. Let him see you practice the oracles of God and what God has dictated and brought to your temple, which yes. is his dwelling place yes. in the inside of you. Look, 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 look. The best well message conveyed, as Dr. King has said, is not one that is well preached, but one that is well lived. You guys understand me? Because yes. I'm watching your life, Pastor Lee. I'm yes. watching your life. Ernie, I'm watching your life. I'm watching because we're visual creatures. Yes. See, you could tell me something, Tasha, and it'll go in this head and out tomorrow. Yes. But what I see you in an example of, that stays with me throughout eternity. Oh, Jesus. Stay with me here. An oracle can also be a place built for someone like a shrine. You guys with me? Yeah. A shrine in this case is a shelter 
a place of protection. Oh, y'all not getting this. Yes, look, 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 a shrine in this case is a shelter, a place of protection. Also a place of consecration or devoted to some holy person or deity. Oh, y'all stay with me here. In the Greek, an oracle is any utterance made or received as authoritative. A person such as a priest through whom a deity speaks through. In order for a deity to speak through you, the deity must be in you. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Stay with me here now. Stay with me here. This stuff is good. And it will save your lives. Look, 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 look. We all should be living, breathing shrines, for we are the place where God resides and speaks through. Yeah. That's the reason why you've got to be careful of what you say mm -hmm. when you yes. call yourself a man or a woman of yes. God. Yes. Don't get down in the dirt with those who are in the mud swinging. Mm -hmm. You stand up high above and you let them know that this is the example that I display, even though you're in the mud. I want you to understand, in my secular job, I don't go down in the dirt and mud with people who are cussing and calling folk out of their names Come on now. Come on now. and have been said, you, yes. you have taught me a better way because of your stance. Mm -hmm. Listen, they didn't say your stance in Christ. They just said, in your stance. Why? Because filthy language never comes out of my mouth. And I mm -hmm. never call somebody something that they're not. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Yes. Come on now. And let me say this. I never call somebody that perhaps my flesh believes that they are. <laughs> Why? Because I see with my priest eyes. You guys understand yeah. me? Because I see that person as a child of God, regardless if they are a raging wrecked them, mm -hmm. running around with two sixes on their head, looking for the third one. They still have opportunity as long as they have breath in their bodies to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior and to be forgiven and to repent. Listen, I was once one of those running around with two sixes on my head. Thank God I never found the third one. <laughs> you guys with me on this? Thank God. I never, but I was searching. My God, I was looking because I didn't know no better. But see, a priest understands that. That's the reason why the priest have what? Compassion. You guys with me on this? Look, 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 look. We should all be breathing living shrines for we are all the place where God resides and speak to. Now, the principles of the oracles of God is different from the institutions of God. Oh, I know I'm giving you guys so much information. Just write this stuff down if you can, and then research it later. Let me say that again. The oracles, the principles with an S of the oracles of God are different, Pastor, from the institutions of God first. The first principles of the oracle of God is the lordship of Jesus Christ over all, or let me say this, the lordship of Christ over all our life and thoughts. That's one. The other principle is the responsibility to love God with our whole being and to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's two. Three, the responsibility to pursue righteousness and practice justice and mercy to everyone. And then fourth, participate in worship and activities of the church. Those are the oracles of the principle. Those are the principle, the oracle of the principles of God. In this case, now, an institution of God is an established foundational law or truth enacted by God himself. We're not talking about institutions, but since I brought it up, I want you to see the difference, right? It is an establishment of foundation. Can y'all say foundation? foundation? So institutions are foundationalized, right? Huh? And then on top of that foundation is the oracles. 
Jesus. It's the oracles of the principles of God. Look, 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 look. It is an establishment of foundation to promote a particular cause or program, right? An example of this is family. Hmm? Family is the first institution of God. It is the foundation that everything's flow from. Why? Because family, God said in the beginning, was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's family. If you don't believe it, search scripture. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was what? The word. And the word is his who? Son. Family is the first institution of God. Not marriage, but family. That's the reason why God says that you're brethren. That's the reason why God says that he has sons. That's the reason. Oh, Jesus, y'all stand with me. God places everything on family. That's the reason why he's giving you examples of symbolism of what family is and what that love is. Some people, if you attack their family, they'll kill you. Even if they're in the body of Christ. You guys, that is a truism. Yeah, it is. That's because family, family, is the first institution of God. It is the crux of love. Yeah, that's, right. that's the reason why God said, listen, I love my son so much, but look at what I did. I gave him over to you. I gave him over to you to do with him as you will. And not only that, it pleased me. Why? Because I wanted to save you. Mm. Jesus. Look, 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 look. In this case, an institution of God is an established foundational law or truth enacted by God himself. It is the establishment of foundation to promote a particular cause of program. Understand that the first principles of the oracle of God is not solid food, is not the solid food of God. So well, Pastor, how can you say that? Why do you say that? Because he said, do you need to be taught this again? Look at scripture. He wouldn't have said that. If it was solid food. Y'all with me on this? Yeah. It is nourishment, but not nourishment in its totality. First Corinthians 6, uh, 2 and 6 says this. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery and hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for, and check this out, he didn't say for his glory, he said for our glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our glory is wisdom. Look, 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 look. Now that's meat. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. And the meat is for our glory. See, God feeds his son's meat. Mm -hmm. He don't give us milk when we are maturing. Mm -hmm. You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. If you find that a seven-year-old is still being breastfed, mm -hmm. there's a problem. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Y'all feeling me on this? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> because a seven-year-old is mature and have teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> let me let me let me let me end this. Hebrews 5, 13 through 14 says, For everyone who partakes only in milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are what? Full, Full age. That is, those by reason of use have their senses, and this is a key, exercise to discern both good and evil. Please note that lords then are not babes, mm -hmm. but rather skilled in the word. Mm -hmm. They are a full age. How many of us in here is a Lord? We raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you because you've passed from priesthood to lordship. Look, look, look. In other words, lords are skilled in Christ because they are intimate with him. If you're not intimate with him, you're not a Lord. Look, look, look. Lords also have the power of discernment. Mm. Mm. Jesus, say with me here. Let me say that again. Lords have the power of discernment, right? Right, right. I'm not talking about a natural discernment. 
I'm talking about a spiritual one. Yeah. You guys with yeah. me on this? Lords have the sense to perceive or recognize what is godly. And see, that's good. See, the word says good. And what is satanic? That is evil. Mm -hmm. You guys with me on this? For priests are becoming lords on this earth so that they will be lords with a capital L and the earth come. Mm -hmm. Who am I in Christ? His Lord. God be the glory forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That is right. Amen. To God be the glory forever. Yes. For those of you who desire to be one of Christ's lords, because understand, in order to be a Lord with a capital L, you must first be a priest with a small P, which graduates you to a Lord on this earth with a small L in order for you to go to the next life to be a Lord that's on his thigh with a capital L. You guys with me on this? Yeah. I want you to understand for those who desire to be Christ's Lord with a capital L, then become part of the good news. That is Christ is born, Christ has died, and Christ is risen. Then make this declaration after me. Talking to you guys who are out there, I want you to say this. God, God I know that I am a sinner. I know that I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I, ask for your forgiveness. I, believe Jesus, I believe that Jesus, Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I trust him as my savior and will follow him as Lord from this day forward. Guide my life. And help, me and help me to do your will. Do your will. I, pray I pray this in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Jesus. Now, if you have just made that declaration and you meant it in your heart, I want you to know that the angels of heaven are rejoicing at this very second. Jesus is standing there with his arms wide open <laughs> to God be the glory. And my heart is just overjoyed because I've done my job. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I will encourage you to get with a good Bible teaching ministry. One that will teach you about who you are, whose you are, so that you can be known by God. This is a good place to start. If you don't have a ministry, email me if you've taken that. Even if you want to just be mentored by us, email us. Somebody will contact you. Somebody will call you. We'll pray for you. We'll stand in a gap with you. If, in fact, you have a desire, know that the doors of this church are always open to God be the glory. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, give you glory and honor. We come before you, praising your name and glorifying you, lifting you up and just simply saying hallelujah. Yes. For as the people of God said this morning, we do not operate from a deficit. We operate from a standpoint of victory. Yes. And we have the victory in Christ Jesus. We know that we are priests and we are lords. And we know that we will soon become lords yes. <laughs> to god be the glory forever and ever thank you so much father i pray that each and every one under the sound of my voice have a fantastic let me say this a good week because a good week is a godly one and we shall forever give your name the glory and honor and praises to god be the glory i thank you guys for listening i thank you in jesus name i pray i thank you for being on the social media platforms i look forward to seeing you next time the same place, the same time. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory. Who's up next? I think I just done taught myself happy.
No, ring. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. 